six of which I spent in the Arabian Gulf region, specifically in Qatar, working in infrastructure projects like New Doha International Airport and some major highway uh, projects. I joined Autodesk almost four years ago, working as an AEC technical specialist and focused on the infrastructure solu solutions from Autodesk like Civil 3D, InfraWorks, Navisworks, and vehicle tracking. This session is about InfraWorks, mostly, and the title is Thinking Outside the Box. We're gonna see how we can use InfraWorks for uh, different types of projects and how we can benefit from this very powerful platform. Uh, I know it looks like a long agenda, but I'm gonna touch upon uh, almost nine points in InfraWorks, and at the very end, I have a small bonus for you if you stick around till the very end of the session. So let's get started. First, do you know that you already can create city models in 3D within minutes inside of InfraWorks? Well, yes, you can. We have a very powerful feature called Model Builder. All that you have to do inside the software, for example, here type in Istanbul, it takes you into the area of Istanbul. Then you have to select an area of interest, either pick a square, a polygon, or you can import it from a shapefile. You can change the location of those markers or grips to a specific area that you want. It has to be less than 200 square kilometers. This is already a very huge area already. Once you're satisfied, you have to type in the name of your project, name it Istanbul South, Istanbul North, share it with a certain group of people, and then hit OK. You will receive an email notification, as you can see here in my email uh, inbox, that the model has been created for you. This usually happens within 10 to 15 minutes. You have a thumbnail of that model in your InfraWorks homepage. You click on it, and the model downloads from the internet within also a couple of minutes to maybe five to 10 minutes max, if it's a huge model. And then you have that model in 3D, as you can see. You have the buildings, you have the roads, you have the terrain. And as my colleague Salvatore mentioned, the accuracy from one location to the other varies depending on the quality of data, but this is pretty much good for uh, conceptual design. So you're getting this free of charge from InfraWorks up to 200 square kilometers. You can actually create multiple models if you want to cover the whole area of Istanbul and merge those models together to go up to 2,000, 3,000 square kilometers with no problem at all inside this powerful platform. Okay, so we've created the model in InfraWorks. What if we want to enhance this model or get more data? So we have the InfraWorks model builder. We have other websites online that provide this type of data. We have extract.bbbike.org. This is where you specify an, a city, Istanbul, and then you specify the type of data. They have many different GIS uh, file formats. You can pick, for example, the easiest is Esri shapefile, SHP. And then you hit OK, and then you, can, you receive an email. You download the data, which can go up to 756 megabytes, up to 500, 756 megabytes maximum limit. And for the 3D models, you have very powerful uh, ways of getting 3D models for buildings, for objects online. We have the 3D warehouse from SketchUp, and this is the website over there. And you have TurboSquid where you can purchase very high quality models. This is the website over there. And definitely there are certain paid services online which you can go and they claim that they have high accuracy, but I cannot recommend any. Now, regarding uh, 3D Warehouse and TurboSquid, I have them opened here. This is the first one. So very easy, turbosquid.com. If I go to TurboSquid, and I'm gonna show you very quickly what we can find there. So Istanbul, I hit OK. And then you will see very rel relevant models of the major land landmarks in Istanbul, the Blue Mosque, uh, Hagia Sophia, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I know it's expensive, but at least you have very high quality models uh, from the city. Some of them are free of charge, but there are very few of them that are free of charge. In 3D Warehouse, the same thing happens. So if you hit uh, Istanbul, okay, Istanbul. Then you will have relevant models to Istanbul as well. And these are usually of less quality than TurboSquid because they're free. And once you hit that button over there, you will download them very quickly. So if I hit here, click, yes, accept the terms. And then it will ask me where I want to save this SketchUp file. 
that I can directly import into Infrax. Okay, just to give you an idea, this is a model that I've created from Model Builder, and I've purchased one model from uh, Turbo Squid. So I'm going to zoom in into this mosque. You can see to what level of detail we can bring in models and incorporate them or augment them with our uh, InfraWorx model. So you can create different animations, you can create uh, different scenes from the 3D models within InfraWorx. But model builder plus extra sources. That was the first point. So what if I want to enhance the model further? I want to enhance my InfraWorx model specifically in regards uh, to buildings. So we have something called uh, rule styles, and this is built in the software. Basically, you get those buildings which are coming from model builder or from a GIS database. You have the footprints. You can create what we call a rule style where you specify, for example, that buildings that are uh, 10 meter high have a certain type of facade. 20 to 30, they have a different style of facade. From within the library, a huge library of InfraWorks. You set all those parameters, and then you just hit run the rule style, and everything in the model updates. So you'll see that those facades, the buildings that have no facades, will have a facade within a second. So run the rule style for all the buildings in there, and you can see now, I don't know if it's showing, but there are uh, here facades for each and every building depending on its height or characteristics. The other thing is that we can connect our model because everything you create in InfraWorks is georeferenced. So you have the X, Y, and Z of your model. The, mo the model is properly geolocated on Earth. You have, for example, the uh, coordinate system of Istanbul there. And each and every point where you pick in the model, you'll get the X, Y, and Z coordinates. To leverage this functionality, we can add a pin, a point of interest here, and we can get the location of that point from, for example, uh, Google Maps. You get here the coordinates from InfraWorx. You put it in Google Maps. And then you get the hyperlink or the link to that. You put it in the tooltip. And every time you hover over the point of interest, you can see what is really existing on Earth from Google Maps. So connecting the 3D model to the Google Maps online. Other things that you can do is actually by uh, random facade assignment, as we've seen uh, earlier. You can assign different facade styles manually. So if, for example, I go back into my InfraWorks model, and here, let's suppose I want to sketch a building very quickly. I go to the sketching tools. I go to buildings. And then let's suppose I will populate this area. I will. Here, go to the manual styles, more styles, and see once I pick this one, OK, the style applies automatically. Or else I can go to the style palette. I'll go to the facade. Here we have barrier, bricks, concrete. I want to go to the brick. Just drag and drop, and everything updates. You can have different styles on different sides, as you can see. There are many, many features inside of InfraWorks where you can actually improve the quality of your model. Create a new facade from existing. So from within the template in InfraWorks, you copy paste one of the styles, you modify some of the parameters, and you generate a new one. Create facade from pictures. So you take pictures of buildings in Istanbul, and you create uh, similar buildings inside of uh, Civil 3D or 3DS Max and bring them into InfraWorks. And finally, photogrammetry as we can do in Recap Photo. How many of you already know about Recap or used Recap? No one here. OK, okay just one. Okay. So I'm going to show you what you can do now with the new technology of Recap Photo. First, if you take pictures from existing buildings in Istanbul using any uh, DSLR camera or any camera, basically, you can push those into a free online tool called uh, Pixel R. You can find it online. It's very easy, Pixel R. And then it's like Photoshop, but it's free online. This one, you can edit the facades take them into Civil 3D or AutoCAD, apply them to the 3D object, and push that into InfraWorks. This is a long process, actually, which takes about uh, 10 minutes. So I've made it very quickly for you, speeded it up. So we've taken the picture, imported it into, as you can see, we're working with the web browser, just pixellr.com. Bring that, do some modifications to the um, existing material. And by the way, this is the work of my colleague, Tomasz Landworski, so I have to thank him for that. 
uh, he did some manipulations inside of pixel uh, R, and then once he was done, he has those facades ready as JPEGs. He used Civil 3D or any other Optus platform like 3ds Max to create a 3D object. It could be a simple object like this one, a box, or even with some setbacks and uh, different heights, and assign the materials inside of Civil 3D or AutoCAD to those faces of the object. Once done, all what you have to do is push it as FBX. You know, in AutoCAD, you can export as FBX. So you export the file as FBX here, export OK. You go to InfraWorks, to the Data Sources panel. You want to import a 3D model. You link to that model. You specify it as a city furniture, and there you go. You have that simple model that you have created from the pictures of your building in InfraWorks. Very quick and easy, very simple. Now, Recap Photo, uh, for those of you who don't know about Recap, Recap is a very powerful uh, software from Autodesk that manages pictures and uh, laser scans. Recap Photo was developed on top of uh, Autodesk Remake that was meant to take many pictures, augment them together, and create a 3D model. So let's suppose I want to take a 3D model of this area. I just take picture 360 degrees. I push them to the cloud, and then I have a full 3D model of my laptop and the stand that it sits on top. This quick video shows you how you can make use of Recap Photo for buildings and infrastructure uh, solutions. So it's dependent on drones or cameras. The best workflow is using drones. So you have a site that has terrain that has uh, cut and fill material, vegetation, buildings, what have you, anything. You run that drone with uh, a GoPro camera, and that drone is, uh, actually has a specific path. So on the software itself, you specify the path of that drone. You can take up to 1,000 pictures. You send those pictures. You upload them to the cloud, and you run the service. Within two to three hours, you will get this high level of detail 3D model. Not only the 3D model itself, but that model is georeferenced. It has coordinates. So you can set, uh, sorry, you can set the coordinate system that uh, you took the photos from, or the end, the locality, and you can specify certain points, uh, survey points. Once done, you will generate the uh, uh, 3D model. The point cloud automatically will generate like a point cloud mesh, the full 3D mesh with all the textures, and the ortho image, the TIFF image that we've seen earlier. Not only it will create that model, but will also allow you, in case you forgot to take picture of a certain area, to even fix certain uh, like discrepancies in, in the model. And then, again, then you can specify the resolution or the decimation, how you want to triangulate uh, those approximations of the point clouds. Here, they've scanned this whole query site, excavation site, and they've moved what 3D model or point cloud data into civil 3D. Uh, they've uh, created the contours. They can check for what is the required fill material, how many material we can get out of the site, et cetera, et cetera. Also, for uh, that data, you can push it to InfraWorks because Recap Photo exports into RCM, uh, the, the mesh RCP, into FBX, into the ortho TIFF image, and FBX as well. So five different file formats which you can export out of Recap Photo, save it, and import it into InfraWorks or Civil 3D. Very, very powerful tool. Now, the same technology was used earlier in the city of San Francisco. So they have taken 5,000 pictures. That was a project with Autodesk for the whole city. They've run it in the cloud, and they've generated this 3D city model fr just from pictures. This is what is called photogrammetry, stitching pictures that overlap together to create the 3D model uh, as a whole. Now, also you can augment your model with uh, point cloud data. So what you see here in this video is actually importing a uh, point cloud into InfraWorks, and then the software is capable to analyze the point cloud data and determine where is the existing terrain as per the existing conditions. And from that point cloud, it will create the existing terrain for the whole model, for you to start your design process. Not only that, the technology is going further. Now, if you bring a point cloud data with trees, light posts, everything, the software will automatically detect that this point cloud is a light post and will recommend a certain object from the library so you, that you can replace this point cloud feature with a 3D object. Imagine the intelligence that's in there in the software. So it's, it's now working very well with vertical objects. 
And now it's also uh, working with horizontal objects as well. It's being tested, and you can uh, check it uh, on your machine if you have InfraWorks uh, installed. OK, so we talked about model builder. We talked how to enhance the project. Let's talk about something different, InfraWorks for um, environmental impact assessment projects. So this also is a real project from uh, Prague. Uh, and this project was also worked on by uh, my uh, colleague, Tomas. The project is basically a landfill. This area has to be landfilled. OK, it's over 15 years. This is where you can check the location in uh, Google Maps, and this is the real project, the documentation on the project. Now, what we care about here are these three major facts. First, the, the landfill has to accommodate 2 million cubic meters of sand or dirt. The uh, project is near uh, the hospital, uh, Motul University Hospital, which is somewhere over here. So this is the landfill, and this is the uh, hospital. And the third major problem or fact is that underground metro station is available and there's a busy road in that area. One way, actually two way, one lane each road. So this road over here, this is the uh, hospital and this landfill, all the trucks are coming into this already busy road. So what was done actually in InfraWorks, they've used a couple of features. They've used coverages, which my colleague showed you earlier to check for the uh, fill with time and how much fill was, was there based on survey data. Uh, terrain statistics, so you just select that area and you check the cubic feet of the fill. They've done a traffic simulation to see what is the effect of the trucks, the big trucks that are bringing the landfill material and dumping there on the existing traffic. And they've used CFD, it's another tool that I'm going to talk about, to prepare the data and show the results of what will happen when this material is dumped on site, there is a heavy wind coming, and how the particles will go with the wind and affect the hospital. I'm gonna touch upon those problems very quickly. So the first problem to tackle or to talk about is traffic impact study. I'm not gonna run the video, it's, it's a long one, but basically this is the busy road that you see here. And this is where the uh, landfill is. So trucks will be coming all the way here and obstructing the traffic and this, the uh, university uh, hospital is over there. So they've run a simulation of the traffic based on existing conditions. So this is the road condition. This is the traffic that we know about. This is the traffic study area. And they've seen that there is a problem with the traffic in that area. There is already a lot of congestion. So this is just the details in what we call the traffic analyst panel. I, I'm sorry, I don't have time to talk about it here, but basically it's setting the traffic matrix, how much vehicles are coming from one lane or one approach to the other. Then once done, they've run the simulation, as you can see, and they've seen that too, mon too many vehicles are already stuck there. They cannot take the left turn. These trucks are already queuing, queuing all the way up. There is added problem uh, of those trucks so what they've done, they've added another lane. So instead of two lanes, now we have uh, a lane here. And they try to manipulate the movement of traffic. So the vehicles on the left lane can go straight and left. Then they tried the other scenario of going only left. And they've noticed that with adding the other lane, the, the, uh, the problem was almost resolved. They went into different iter iterations. And finally, once they were happy with the uh, results, this is the, for example, the final one, they've run the simulation, and as you can see, there are no queuing whatsoever here and minimal queuing over there. So they've relieved at least the problem of the uh, going vehicles back and forth. Only the trucks going into the site and outside of the site, they're going to have some queuing, but they have no issue with it because the major focus was the major traffic on that road. So augmenting the uh, data with so here is the final actually result. Sorry. OK. Uh, anyway. Now, we've solved the problem of traffic congestion that's going to happen because of the site. Now, what about the particles? So this sand or dirt will go with the wind and will affect the hospital and the patients. There is a very cool workflow, which is we use InfraWorks 360 with all of the terrain, the buildings, and everything. We can augment the model and enhance it with models from Format, AutoCAD, Solid 3D, and Revit if the need be. But we run a simulation 
of the results of the wind in a software called CFD, Computational Fluid Dynamics. And then we move that data or results back into inference. I'm going to run through the software very quickly. CFD, Computational Fluid Dynamics, is a software usually used in manufacturing, but it has many uses in building. Some of its uses is electronic schooling. So if you have a heavy laptop like mine, they run the analysis of how the air will come inside, cool the components, and get out, for example. Data centers, like big server centers, the lighting uh, machinery. And for the AEC, for our industry, you can check, for example, the comfort uh, level. So here in this room, maybe here I'm feeling hot because of the lights. You there under the AC vent, you're feeling cold. All of that simulation, you can run it using your Revit model in CFD and understand which are the areas that are going to feel hot and which are the areas that are going to feel very cold based on the geometry, the vents, the airflow conditions, etc., etc. It's a very uh, professional software. So these are the major concerns or benefits in AEC. We have the, what we call thermal comfort within a building or uh, auditorium or something, smoke migration. Sometimes if there is a fire, where this uh, smoke will go, internal and external airflow, and natural ventilation, which I'm going to talk about later on. Now, we want to see what is the effect of this wind with the landfill and the dirt material on the patients in the hospital. So based on the study, we brought the DTM, or digital uh, terrain model, and the vegetation and buildings into InfraWorks. And we exported this whole model from InfraWorks into FBX. We took FBX into 3D, uh, Civil 3D, sorry. In Civil 3D, we created simple solids. We union, we made union of some of the solids to simplify the, the data, as you can see there, using some basic AutoCAD functionality. And then once done, we pushed that data into CFD. So now we have the geometry. We, what we need is the material uh, parameters and the wind condition. So you can go to this on, uh, online website to get the wind conditions of any city on Earth. Usually they have them near airports. And this hospital happened to be near an airport, so we got that data. That data was fed into CFD. And from the study, the health study, they found out that the uh, total suspended particle of this is affecting the patients or is not good if it reaches the hospital. So we want to minimize the, the result or the objective of the study is to minimize the reach of this uh, material into the hospital. So now we have the material quantities, we have the geometry, and we have the wind conditions. We use something called another software. Sorry about this uh, workflow. Another software called um, CFD Studio, if I'm not mistaken, or Workflow Studio. You move that data into CFD. And then you have everything there in CFD. You have the geometry, you have the geometry, sorry, you have the material uh, parameters, and you have the inflow, outflow conditions of the wind. So you know the wind will flow from this side and go from the other side. Once done, you run the analysis and simulation of CFD, which uh, usually runs locally, but you can run it in the cloud, and you get some certain results about the uh, particles, the velocity of the speed uh, of the wind, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is just another plugin on top of CFD to export the uh, results as FBX, because in InfraWorks we read FBX. We cannot read natively the results of CFD. So you download that free of charge, you use it in CFD, and then you bring it into InfraWorks. This is the InfraWorks model. This is the final result. We, if we have imported the traces of those small particles, the dirt that affect the patients. And we see that those wind uh, tunnels are taking those particles, and in some areas, they're actually hitting the building uh, of the hospital. So a recommendation was made that in this area, an embankment will be made, a big fill area, so that the wind flow will go up and will go above the uh, hospital building. So this is one of the reasons why it's very powerful to use many software together to do certain type of analysis. So here it was OK, but here on the other side, as you can see, it was hitting the building. So they've recommended having a fill, big fill over there to change the trajectory of the wind and the dust particles. And definitely created different snapshots, put them in the report, and send them as a scientific study. That was number three. Number four I want to talk about is InfraWorks and natural ventilation. So same like we've done in CFD, but now for a different purpose. Those who work in urban and master planning, one of the reasons why uh, we, we care about master planning is checking the wind environment and having a comfort zone for the people who walk on the streets. 
So what you can do in InfraWorks, after you develop your model, select a certain block of interest, move that block of interest with the data that you have into uh, a simplifying tool, I would say AutoCAD or AutoCAD Civil 3D, to simplify the objects and the vegetation, and then apply the materials, properties of those buildings, the wind conditions in CFD, and run the analysis. So this is what you will get. You will get many uh, simulations. You will get maybe heat transfer. You will get uh, plot charts, et cetera, et cetera. And you can export a video out of it once you push it into Infra. This is, was done for the city of Manhattan in New York. And they've made this study for a small block there. As you can see, you can see different colors. So the color represents the heat. So people traveling between certain buildings, they ha will have feeling of maybe uh, hotness, other they will feel too cold, and then you can modify the geometry of those buildings by having certain setbacks sometimes or increasing the spacing to have less uh, heat uh, feeling or less cold feeling for the uh, pedestrians. This is very useful in climates that don't have high humidity. So this will not work, for example, uh, in Dubai or Qatar or Saudi Arabia because we have high level of humidity, but will work very well where you have less humidity than in those regions. That's the only limitation that this technology has. This is another success story you can check online about uh, natural ventilation. Uh, it's there. It's from the City of Science and Technology in Singapore. They've run this uh, using InfraWorks and Civil 3D models with CFD. And they actually published there that this natural ventilation is approximately saved, saving them around 10 to 30 percent of energy costs to cool those buildings. So you can imagine how many uh, millions of dollars this will save them across the life cycle of the building. That was number four. Number five, project progress. Now, customers and clients are usually asking for too many different things from the, the software. Let me show you what uh, I've created for a customer in Dubai. This is a mega developer uh, in Dubai who develops usually big areas of uh, buildings, uh, building projects. So they've requested how they can check the status of their model. Here they want to check this huge development, how they can, for example, see uh, how many uh, are built, how many are, for example, not built, how many are uh, townhouse type 1, type K, et cetera, et cetera. The other thing is we can actually query the data. So not only we can visualize it by having uh, property themes, we can have here in the model explorer subsets. So the board of directors is there. They want to check what is going on site. They don't want to go to site. They want to check, for example, as you can see, set certain criteria. So for example here, uh, sold. What are the properties in my project that are sold, that are of this type, that are uh, of this area, et cetera, et cetera. So you set the properties or parameters that you want to query about. And the software will highlight those for you very quickly. Not only that, it will show you a data table. Because remember, InfraWorks is not just about the 3D, but also it's connected to a GIS database. So it will give you the total count with all of the uh, parameters or metadata for those 3D objects. Number six, how can you experience your projects like never before? Also using InfraWorks, you can have a powerful augmented reality experience. Using your iPad app, and by pushing the model, as Salvatore showed us earlier, you can push the model to the cloud. You can get your iPad app, and I highly recommend iPad app, uh, iPad Pro for this, not the smaller ones, the iPad Pro. You go to the site, and then you turn on the camera inside of the app, and the software automatically will superimpose your, for example, new buildings or existing infrastructure, augmenting the existing with the proposed. Not only that, this is actually a full project, and this was done by uh, our colleague in the US. Uh, I think his name is Jeff Bartels. He took this InfraWorks model, published it to the cloud, took the iPad Pro, and compared the recording from the site using a mobile versus the one that's taken by InfraWorks. And you will see to a second how much overlap or consistency there is between the augmented reality experience versus the one from the mobile. So he's running the app inside of uh, his iPad, opening that model, specific model that he has shared. This is the camera that he has used with the iPad Pro. And then use this on the site. So you can see there's a little bit of lag between, but you can see it's the same features. 
So see this curb return over here? That's the same. The parking's there, they're there. So you can see in real life, your model superimposed on the existing reality. Why I said iPad Pro? Because it has better GPS uh, sensor and is more powerful, it can handle bigger models. That's the only reason why. Now, in the uh, state of Qatar, Autodesk helped the Public Works Authority, like the Ministry of Infrastructure there, to create a 3D model for the West Bay area using uh, several 3D, 3DS Max, and other tools. So they've developed this model, simulated it, and they've also asked us to create a bimulator. So this is the CEO of uh, Ashgal uh, driving through the roads of Doha, this, the capital, and seeing how the, prod the, the area will be after implementing certain infrastructure projects. This workflow is not complicated anymore. There is a powerful tool from Autodesk called Stingray, which I've actually uh, presented on last year here in AUX, Istanbul. So if you check my YouTube channel, it's available there. It literally will take you 30 to 45 minutes using InfraWorks, 3ds Max, and Stingray to create this move from InfraWorks to um, a gaming experience. So if, for example, I go to InfraWorks here, I'm going to show you exactly what I did last year, very quickly. So the session title was Gaming Infrastructure. And this model was created from scratch. So I created, created this model, brought some uh, Dubai-related models like Burj Al Arab and certain features, imported them, created the InfraWorks model, and then moved into uh, 3ds Max and Stingray. So as you can see. This model over here has everything. It has uh, 3D objects, terrain. Here I have a bridge. And then in the process, I've created this 3D game. So just InfraWorks, 3DS Max, and Stingray. It will take some time to load in the background. You hit Start, and there you go. I'm there into the same model that I've created in InfraWorks. So you can showcase your projects to your customers. And if I hit W, as you can see, I'm driving in the roads of my model. Now I'm hitting a tree. Definitely there are sounds. You can check for issues. So if the vehicle is clashing into a ground surface, you will have it there, etc., etc. So you got the idea. This is very quickly what you can do. OK, number seven, road and bridge design. Since many of you are not using InfraWorks already, please install it, you can download a free trial for 30 days and uh, play around with it. Why I'm asking you to do so? Because with road design, you can sketch roads that are standard based. So if you have a standard, let's suppose Ashto 2011 or any other standard, you pick just the road style depending on the road speed and with few clicks you're generating a road in 3D that intelligent, very quickly and smartly uh, connects with the other roads and creates intelligent intersection. You can change the profile very quickly here, and everything will update in 3D, including the grading, the cut and fill, and generate the cost estimates. Now, once you're done from that, that will take you a few minutes, you can open that model in InfraWorks. This is what I call moving the conceptual design to the detailed design, just specifying the area of interest, and you will get the terrain, you will get the, uh, the road itself, and other features. So as you can see here, I have my road alignment that I've created in InfraWorks. I have not lost anything. I have my terrain model. I make, as a civil designer, the final adjustments. I generate the corridor. And once I'm done, I can move back to InfraWorks for visualization. So I'm done with the visualization. I just import the road, and there you go. This is my final road alignment and profile. You'll see it in a second. A really very perfect workflow between the two. Ease of sketching and designing in InfraWorks ease of doing the detailed design documentation and quantity takeoff in Civil 3D, and back to InfraWorks for visualization. That is for roads. What about bridges? So last year, we introduced the, uh, another cool feature, integration between InfraWorks and Revit. Uh, this is here, you're seeing how we can create a bridge, a structural sound bridge, very quickly in InfraWorks. As you can see, it will generate a 3D model with all of the different components. And then we can move into InfraWorks with three clicks, literally three clicks. You right click on that model, you send it to Revit, and the model will be created in Revit in 3D with all of its components. Geotechnical, very quickly, you can create geotechnical uh, boreholes and data using the geotechnical module. Once you're done, you export it to FBX, 
and then you bring that data to InfraWorks for your conceptual design. So now once you're designing in InfraWorks, you have idea of what's going underneath. You want to avoid certain uh, bad layer of material. Number nine, and this is the last point, very quickly, you can actually do accurate flood simulations in InfraWorks. And this is possible because Autodesk has partnership with a company called Hydro Hydronia. They have a very powerful tool called uh, Riverflow 2D, which uh, works from within InfraWorks and does many different things like 2D river hydraulic simulation, dam break, flood analysis, emergency analysis, flood plain, and even sea level rise. The process is really very easy. It's as easy as selecting the area. So this will take half a minute. This is the InfraWorks model we want to uh, check. You just select the flooding uh, flood plain or the scenario or area of interest. You specify the inflow or outflow areas, conditions where the water will come from and where it will escape. You input some parameters, like what is the inflow uh, in cubic meter per hour per feet, and then you run the simulation, and you will have the simulation in real time. You can check the velocity. You can check the levels. You can take snapshots, and then you can record them as a video. You have multiple inflows. You have multiple things to do. And there are many uh, areas in the world that have used this. This is from uh, New York. You can use it for here in Istanbul and see any flooding scenarios that might happen in the long run. I'm done with the presentation. Just last thing is a quick bonus. I know it's difficult to talk about a new software like InfraWorks or AVT, but honestly, you can learn those if you set some time for them. Uh, early this year, I read two books which helped me learn AVT, Autos Vehicle Tracking, very quickly. And these are these two. I highly recommend. I don't know if they're available in Turkish language. There is this one, The First 20 Hours, How to Learn Everything Fast. This book uh, gives you an idea how to set 20 hours to do what is called rapid skill analysis, how you set 20 hours of your time, and you for sure will learn InfraWorks or AVT, versus this book will convince you how if you set 10,000 hours of your time over two, three, three to five years, you will be an expert in a certain field. And there are many examples of Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and others who have spent this amount of time before they reach the success and fame they, they know about. One last example which actually made me look into this. I was traveling from Istanbul to uh, Ankara last year, and I came across a guy who does very cool videos. So I was like, how would he do those videos? And apparently, he's an expert in video, uh, video uh, editing. So I'm just going to give you an idea of what this guy can do. Imagine. And it looks really real. So if you check his videos online, you will never imagine that these are really happening in real time. So he's baking or frying something in the pan. And you'll see that it's getting smoke, et cetera, et cetera. Imagine. It's really amazing. I've spent hours just looking in his videos because he's actually the one who did the safety video on Turkish Airlines, uh, apparently, the one that you put the seat belt, etc. And if you want to Google his name, his name is Zach King, by the way. So this is his picture, and this is his name in case you want to learn more about him. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, this is my email address. Please feel free to send me any questions or uh, problems that you might have. I'll be willing to help my LinkedIn account and YouTube channel where I will be posting most of my sessions that I deliver uh, in the Middle East region and Africa. So, Tashakur, thank you.